It is now four o'clock. I'll call the meeting to order. Our first item is our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Mr. Vice Chair, could you read our mission statement? The mission of Marshall Public Schools is to educate, support, and prepare all learners for success. Thank you. Time to approve the agenda. Do we have a motion? I'll move. I'll second. Any additions? If not, please vote. It is approved. Public forum, and this is the time that if anybody that's in the public would like to approach the board. Moving on to our presentation. Welcome, Jeremy. It's always a pleasure to have you. So I wanted to share this afternoon with you a little bit about the new North Star accountability system. This is a new state um, system for looking at schools, talking about successes or areas of, of um, struggle. The uh, results that were released last week for the North, North Star system were, um, it's, a, it's a system where they focus more on overall school improvement, where it used to be the state just looked at test scores. And they've come out this year with, this, with the North Star piece, and we're looking at multiple different measures. So that's what I want to walk through, kind of explain what that looks like, and then where Marshall Public Schools fell, how our, what our results look like for this year. One of the big pieces that the state's talking about is equity. And this is a, it's a piece that we hear a lot. We're doing the training with the new teacher center for our mentor program, and we're talking a lot about equity there too, just looking at for all staff and students, what do we need to do to even that, even that playing field, if you will so that everyone has what they need to be successful. And it's not, not giving everyone the same thing, but meeting those, meeting those needs for everyone. And it's something that we've been talking a lot about this fall in our back to school workshops, that kind of thing too. The MDE, Department of Ed, they recognized 526 schools last week based on results from multiple different measures that, that we'll talk about through this. Um, measures that we look at are achievement and progress over time, looking at math and reading, progress toward English language proficiency, graduation rates, and consistent attendance. So the achievement is looking at the percent of students that were proficient in grade levels and at, in subgroups that were proficient across different grade levels. The progress toward, um, toward <coughs> achievement, that's uh, talking about growth. So how many more kids, how many kids move from does not meet to partially meets or partially meets to meets or so on and so forth on the, on the testing. Then they also look at things like graduation rate, percent of students graduating in both four and in seven years. Jeremy, are they doing cohorts or are they doing uh, grades? Just like grades. Grades? Yeah. Well, like for the growth, they would measure for cohorts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then attendance looks at percentage of students that were at least 90% um, in school during, during the school days. And then they broke all those different levels down to subgroups. So you look at... Um, free and reduced or special needs or different racial minority groups, that sort of thing as well. In addition to recognizing schools um, for success, there are also 485 schools that were identified in the state as in need of support. And of those 485, 10 were in this, in this region. And the Commissioner of Ed, there's a quote on here that I won't, won't read, but it's, she's talking about equity as well, and how that's, that's really the focus of the, of the piece. When you talk to MDE, they're saying, you know, it used to be it felt like a very punitive system. Like you're, you, we call it the naughty list, you know, you're on the naughty list this year. And that's not the, not the case anymore. It's more looking at, at that, providing that equality for all students and for staff. What do we need to help, help all those schools be successful? So we talked about the multiple measures in different subgroups. Um, any group with at least 20 students in it would, would count for the, for the measures that they look at, and you qualify for either recognition or support in those areas. The other thing that's a lot different with the new system with North Star is it used to be just Title I schools would qualify. So for Marshall, you take Title I schools that take the MCA test, Westside was the only site that would qualify for, this, for, the, for the recognitions. And now the North Star system looks at all schools, all public schools. So all of our sites have data we look at. 
And what, this is, what, what they put together with this is taking the world's best workforce, the state accountability, or the state piece, and the ESSA, the federal law, and putting those guidelines together. This is a way of looking at all those different needs together in one thing. So we talk about different stages as well as some, some of the conversation will hear us look at. Um, the stages that are, that are listed, it's those academic achievement, progress towards proficiency, graduation rates, and attendance. They, which stage you fall into will determine if you're in one of the lower schools, what type of um, support you get from MDE, whether you get support from the Regional Center of Excellence or if you get support directly from MDE. Um, the higher the need, the stronger the level of support that you would get from them. Jeremy, when you talk about support from them, mm -hmm. what type of support? It would depend on which area you fell in. If you have low test scores, they'd come in and help you, you know, like they used to do with the old system coming in and providing, looking at what, what's going wrong and what they can do to turn that around. I think part of it too, Bill, is we're really not sure yet what the support means. We know the Regional Center of Excellence is here. <clears throat> Excuse me, they'll be working with districts, but we don't know what that looks like. So. It is the first year with all of it as well, so yeah. So four ways to look at the indicators. Um, the top 5% of schools in the state for each of the subgroups was recognized. Um, you could fall in the area of meeting or exceeding the state target. So they set the targets by, um, it wasn't like a predetermined, if you're at this percentage, you're going to receive this recognition. It, it all came after the results were in. They said, okay, these are the top 5% and these are where the, where the kind of cuts were for different things. So meeting or exceeding the targets, below the targets, or the bottom 5% for supports. So, so just the bottom 5% get the support? The strongest level of support would be the bottom 5%, yep. So we don't know what the support is, but does MDE know what the support is? We think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, as, as the pieces are rolling out, we're learning more about it. So. Yeah. Um, I'm going to walk through for each of the sites and for the district as a whole. We didn't fall in an area of support in any of the areas. Our, our data looked really good. We were very, very happy with what we saw. So I want to walk through some strengths that we, that we saw in the data with you. Um, for the district as a whole, the strengths, the biggest strengths we saw were progress toward EL proficiency, which is an area we spend a lot of time working on over the past few years. Um, our seven-year graduation rate was strong. Academic progress in the area of math specifically and consistent attendance across the different buildings and I'll walk through each building as well But our consistent attendance so students attending school at least 90% of the time looked good at at all sites Parkside they, they don't give the MCA's so there's less data for Parkside to look at um, But they do look at the progress toward EL proficiency and attendance and those numbers were high above the state averages in both <coughs> of those areas um, in fact, Parkside was recognized as one of the top 5% in the state in the area of multiracial students in the consistent attendance. So um, the banner you see up here is one that comes from MDE as part of that recognition, and then that's a banner we can put on our website and such, promoting that's, that we were in the top 5% at Parkside in that area. Westside um, has the data for all the different areas. We exceeded the state and Marshall Public Schools averages at Westside in the progress toward EL proficiency, in our reading progress area and in the area of attendance. So Westside had some, some strong scores as well. And Westside was recognized in two different areas in that top 5%. Um, Westside was recognized in the area of progress toward English language learner proficiency and consistent attendance for EL learners. Pretty exciting for Westside with those things. The middle school had strengths in math and reading achievement, um, math progress, and in attendance. So some things that were exciting there. And middle school is also recognized in the top 5% in the area of Asian student and EL student attendance. And the high school um, has the strengths we saw there were an area of academic achievement specific to math. Our seven-year graduation rate was high at the high school and consistent attendance was high as well. And Maytech has separate measures, a separate site. Um, Maytech exceeded the state and the Marshall Public School in the area of reading achievement. And the seven-year graduation rate at Maytech was 20% higher than the four-year graduation rate, which as a credit recovery program, that makes sense that the four-year graduation rate is going to be a little lower, but the seven-year rate, that means where students are graduating and getting through what they need through that site. So that was good to see what we're hoping for. 
Um, the Minnesota Report Card is a site you can go to for more information. They have a lot of things listed on there. Um, and the website is listed in the presentation, but looking at overall performance, and they break it down. It's, an, it's a new link on the report card site that breaks down all the data for the different schools. You can see, you can compare to um, other districts and that sort of thing as well. And you can find all this data up there, graduation rates, access scores, MCA scores, demographics, um, college going, um, engagement, staffing profiles, a lot of things that are available on that report card site. That's where we're getting information from as it's coming out as well. And then there's a couple takeaways that, you know, this is a new system, so it's new for all of us, figuring out as we, as we go through and it rolled out during workshop week, so it was a busy week for us to look through things as well. But, um, you know, we're working through finding, finding the data and, and where we do, where we grow from there. New system is going to take a while for us to completely understand some of those, those new things that are, that are questions for us. A lot of information um, from there that we can use for our continuous improvement plans as we start writing those this fall. And the data supports the hard work for staff, students, and families. Recognition is, of course, great to see, but we always have, have other areas to work on, too, so it's nice to have other data points to look at. That was a lot of information kind of quickly. What other questions do you guys have? I don't know if you can answer this or not, but it seems like the big word in the past four years have been the achievement gap, and that wasn't mentioned at all. I think they broke is it down all to all those subgroups, all so looking at it in a looking at the same things in a different way. I think um, achievement gap is still part of the world, world's you best can workforce. Still figure out what that is through all this. Yep. Yeah, yeah. When we're looking at at all those different, when we talk about the the achievement and the progress it's broken down to all those different subgroups as well. So we're still looking at achievement gaps in all those areas, and we'll be writing goals in those areas as well. So that remains a focus for World's Best Workforce. Did this show that we were making progress in closing those a little bit? I haven't pulled all the specifics of that yet. I haven't seen that yet either, although uh, a lot of that, some of that, <clears throat> would have been a part of our World's Best Workforce plan which we'll be presenting, I think, was coming going to up be here. Yeah, <laughs> we flipped them around. Um, and then also our achievement and integration plan. And I think uh, achievement gap in the skips would have probably gone back to the NWEA results, mm -hmm. Jeremy. So um, we do need to take a look at that, though, absolutely. Yeah, that's something we'll talk about. I think it's, is it the next meeting, maybe, Scott? Yep. Yeah. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. Board forum, does board members have anything they'd like to bring up? Anything you learned in Hawaii? It rains a lot. <laughs> when I'm there. Very good. Discussion. We'll go into our enrollment update. I want to open up the uh, document that I that I put together actually today. We asked all of our sites to submit their, uh, I'll say, head counts to us today. Just a basic count of how many students we had and tried to illustrate for you some things that we look at. So when we're getting ready to uh, figure out enrollment projections, we use a lot of times what's called grade progression, where we just roll the number of students that we end in this case last year with, we just roll that forward to the next year. And, and that gives us somewhat of an idea of where we're going to be at. So you can see, and that's where the, the blue arrows are at there. Last year, we finished the year with 2,470 students. So using grade progression, we, we thought uh, we'd have somewhere in the vicinity of 2,494 students. The reason that the blue kindergarten, handicapped kindergarten, and kindergarten number is uh, shaded in blue is because we don't know how many kindergartners we're going to have. So we try to use sort of an estimate of, or an average of the, the previous however many years. So, you know, we, we thought going into this school year we we're going to see an enrollment increase, right? Everybody's with me. So now you take the first day of school today which is the column that's shaded in orange. And uh, we had 2,549 students that showed up, which is obviously, um, you know, significantly higher than it was last year and significantly higher than what we uh, thought it would be based on grade progression and some of our other things. So, you know, like I said, 2,549 students is 
79 students more than we finished last year with. And, and depending on how you look at the difference from the grade progression method, it's either 72 or 55 students higher. And, and again, those numbers are shaded in blue because that kindergarten number comes into play. And it, should, and it really isn't a grade progression number, it's an estimate. So um, we have more students than we anticipated. Uh, that's a good thing. Obviously, we've uh, had that conversation. I think this is our ninth year ninth consecutive year of increasing enrollment. And uh, we tried to make some adjustments, especially at the middle school, in terms of the sections when we were doing our budget. I think we, if I remember correctly, added a section to fifth grade and moved a section from sixth grade to eighth grade, sort of anticipating what our uh, enrollment numbers were going to be. And, and we'll continue to watch those over the next few weeks. I typically don't get real excited about enrollment until right around the 1st of October. But, um, you know, when the number is that much higher than what we thought and that much it was going to be and that much higher than last year, um, it's definitely something to be excited about and uh, we'll just continue to monitor it. So I don't know if you have any questions that I can try to answer or if there's something in here that doesn't make sense. It made perfect sense to me this afternoon, but that doesn't mean it will to you. So. High school numbers on the top include in May Tech? They do, yep. I just uh, went with sort of a grade comparison, and then in the bottom, uh, Matt, I, I went ahead and broke them down. Yep. With that significant a jump at the high school, space challenges, I mean, that's almost a whole other section. Yeah, I, th I think we have space challenges pretty much everywhere, Bill. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about that for a while, and, uh, you know, even when we start to look at boy, it'd be nice to have uh, in a situation where we would say it'd be nice to have another section of blank grade. Space just doesn't exist. So um, you know, that's, I guess that's a challenge that we have with, which has created some opportunities as well for us to do some things programming wise, but challenge that we have with increasing enrollment. And uh, I think our administrators and staff do a really uh, good job of being creative and, and have done for a number of years being creative with space and, and uh, we'll just have to continue to take it a year at a time. Do we still stay within our classroom sizes like West Side if we jumped up 18 You know I'm gonna I'll look at that Karen and, and uh, today was kind of a, a rush with everything else going on but I think in general with the adjustments that we made um, and, and the addition of a section I think we're going to be Pretty close. Kindergarten is always one that um, we tend to be a little bit over on, but we also have to remember that we have a full-time aide in each kindergarten classroom. So if that number ends up being higher than our target, that's that's not the worst thing in the world because um, those aides do obviously a lot of great work for kids and, and are almost like having another teacher in the classroom. So I think we're going to be okay, and I'll get that information for you later this week. This information I think pretty dramatic, a 55 student increase beyond what we projected, going along with demographer, further accentuates the point for space needs and moving forward with the building bond. You know, that's a good point, Bill, and I haven't done it yet, but I will sometime this year. We have, uh, back when uh, the state demographer was here a couple times, I, I believe once before my time and once during my time, we have far outpaced her projections exactly. over the last few years so um, well, and even as as closely as we look at it each year from an administrative perspective this is what we expect to see next year being 55 students beyond what we thought we would get is that's pretty huge yep. I would agree did our kindergartners start today or are they later in the week they start uh, next, next week. Monday so that number could fluctuate a lot between now and then. All of oh, these numbers could, could fluctuate, but yep, we... Yeah, it's assessment week, as you know. We've got east and west side. We have assessments yesterday and today and tomorrow. And kindergarten is four days this week. So the actual student body showing up as class would be next Monday in the elementary grades. Kindergarten, yep. Very good. So it's good news, I think, but I wanted to share that with you. Great news. 
This will be our uh, second review of policies 301 to 306. Does anybody have any questions? I just want to thank Tricia for keeping us on top of, of a review of the policies each. Because we go through all of them each year, correct? Correct. Every three years. Every three years? Good job, Tricia. Moving on to our action items, authorization to advertise and hire a paraprofessional. Motion to approve. Second. It's open for discussion. Any discussion? Hearing none, please vote. It is approved. Next action item is approval to add work session on Monday, September 17th. We have a motion. So moved. I'll second. It's open for discussion. Just uh, typically we try to schedule a walkthrough at each of the buildings in September. I think we've often done it today, but um, we're gonna we moved it to the 17th. So because it's going to be before the 5:30 meeting. Trisha and I talked and thought it would be best just to call it a work se session, get it on the schedule. We'll have minutes, which will be call the work session to order, visited these sites, adjourn, boom, and then we're in our regular meeting uh, at 5.30 on the 17th. Sounds good. We'll vote on that, please. Any disapproved? Action item to close the meeting. No second. Second. Vote, please. And the meeting is now closed. Have any questions before we chase you out? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. Don't blame me, that's just...